We are running late, and the hour is near where we have to do everything we need to do in our lives. Thank you, everybody, for the wonderful comments here yesterday on the cruise ship of the mind, which we're going to have to put some, like, motorboat engines on today to really speed things up. We have a ton of news stories, a ton of wonderful art pieces like this right here. Artist Journal, June 29th, 2023, broadcasting from the high seas of the imagination in Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, and welcome back. So, Rune Tune, with a beautiful follow-up work to that first work we saw in Foundation maybe three weeks ago. I've had to hazard a guess, and just a beautiful, colorful work. You might be surprised to hear me say these beautiful, warm grays that are cycling through each other at almost different rates. This pulsating work here, this organism this art organism here, it almost reminds me from a representational point of view of Basquiat's skull a little bit, like almost you can see the eyes here and then kind of a mouth here, right? Maybe a nose of sorts, maybe not, but it kind of has this distant echo, also kind of a distant echo of, you know, Keith Haring's wide markers and also Zap Comics, a little bit. Can't remember the artists in there. Not Crumb, but uh, some of the other artists that were in Zap Comics. So beautiful work here. And again, these grays that are cycling through at different speeds. It, feel, it feels alive. And I also just love the richness in the color of this work here. It's almost like, here it's like beige, but cycling with grays and this white, a beautiful, beautiful combination with the black, uh, beautiful work. And then finally, the background here, this canvas, this static canvas that looks physical. I mean, it looks like a photo of a canvas. Or maybe it's AI created. AI can do this these days. Contrasting as well, this gray contrasting with these cycling grays. And again, part of it moving, part you know, part of it even the it's really interesting how even the the marker, quote unquote marker strokes get bigger and smaller. Again, it's pulsating and breathing. It is a one of one. It is available on foundation in DJ Kuro's friendly integration world. It is a reserve of 0.15 ETH. So a beautiful addition. Love the title. I don't even know what that means, but it's it's a beautiful sounding title. Almost just like the work itself resists like easy, uh, you know, understanding. You know, you're looking for patterns in here and it's familiar a little bit with the mouth. The teeth, I think, stand out first. And then eventually you start seeing the eyes, but it's it, it resists rationality in a sense. And just like this title with a zero in it. It's kind of close to what seems like a word, but I'm not sure what that means. And there's a number in there. It's a kind of like a perfect title. Perfect. It kind of captures what's going on in the work a little bit. And I also like this contrast, which I never noticed before. You see the dots here with the pulsating gray and then the, just the static dots over here. So a lot going on in this really stunning work here by Runetune. Uh, continuing on, thank you, Weary Squirrel, for the sales here of 8-Bit Nature Works. Uh, I give these to people for weddings and birthdays and everything. So I'm an addition to 25, which I actually am still printing out. And I need to do it soon, actually, before I move. So rain, forest, all Weary Squirrel, big shout out and thank you for the sales here. And thank you, everybody, for coming to yesterday's Twitter Spaces. Uh, you know, they've, we've had some really great shows. That one was kind of like, uh, it was almost like a FOMO show. Like I, yeah, like I, I was so excited and grateful for Ben at Art Matter and Oxide to come on the show and share, uh, really share, uh, what's going on at Art Matter and really how people can get involved. I mean, some serious alpha being dropped there for people that are interested in getting their works, you know, with robots to help them assist their works. As we discussed there, it feels like a new form of mark making, of, of painting construction. And, you know, as Ben put it, the founder of Art Matter, I might add, who was on stage, I saw on Twitter with DJ Spooky, like a few hours later, making time for us. Uh, as Ben was saying, I think we're going to have the, you know, not to be hyperbolic, he was saying, I think we're going to have the nicest, the greatest paintings we've ever seen. 
is, is going to come out of this uh, technology. And I actually think he's right. Just what we're seeing already, it can turn, you know, if you just make a simple, you know, what if we took, uh, for example, Runetune's work that we just saw there? And what if we applied, uh, you know, Art Matters, you know, robots to the job? I mean, you could probably start to get already some incredibly stunning works. So it's just very interesting. It's just very, very interesting. So give that a listen. Uh, fascinating. Thank you for all the, look at all these comments on the 200th episode. Massive thank you to the community. Diego Barrow, Santiago Marquez, Demon Ego, Libro Block, Plato, Stoy, Flora, DJ Kiro, Martin, Martin, Tornado, Edmarola, and not a number, maybe ah hack. Our like it goes on and on. Uh, our Presti, more to spiral. The Nuggeteer, Mary Migraine, Leprochant. Massive thank you for these comments. It means a lot to me. Edmarola, you know we're all friends here. It's hilarious. We've never met, but we're uh, but we see each other more than almost anybody else we know. So it's kind of funny that way, isn't it? Uh, Edmarola, with we started last episode with that work and we we're having some kind of speculation on how it was made so i wanted to just uh ed kind of filled us in a little bit great episode as always so you're correct my friend the artwork i like how he puts that in quotes is made in a sprite in a is a square canvas i do not use the brush plugin anymore as the creator states in his website he doesn't want it to be used to create nfts it's a pity, but I respect it. So this is made using the custom 8x8 dither in Aspirite. As often I do, I start abstract and then in Procreate, make the painting, fit to a perspective, and draw the gallery and the subjects. After I finish the Procreate part, I import it back. So it sounds like starts in Aspirite, puts it into Procreate, and then importing it back to Aspirite to final color corrections and a bit more dithering. So the power of export, um, because again, particularly with digital, but it's true for really any medium you use, but particularly with digital software tools, tend to dictate the result that you get. It, it really, you know, uh, so if I'm using Deluxe Paint, the results are gonna be a certain way than if I'm using Procreate with my little stylus, or if I'm using, you know, Sketchbook Pro on my phone or pick your software. So I'm a huge believer and fan of exporting. So here you're seeing Ed export back and forth between Procreate and Aspirite. Very, very powerful. Uh, continuing on, just a massive thank you. Look at all these comments uh, on the uh, 200th show. So I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, continuing on and Sky also. Uh, with a comment regarding this work we were looking at yesterday. Congrats on 200, 200 shows, and thanks for showing my work once more. It's always exciting. You seem curious about the process, so I'll explain. So this work here, I created a scape in Blender and textured it with previous glitch captures, animated it, and rendered it to an MP4. I ran the 10-second loop on the scape through my modified video mixers and rescanned off my TV with a digital camera. They then made a GIF, so actually no AI in this one. So moral of the story, more exporting and the power of exporting, right? So just kind of interesting. It's almost like Another way of looking at these softwares is rather than as different mediums as almost like different brushes to a certain to, uh, to use a very loose analogy, you know, it's like using a different kind of brush, uh, you know, oh, I'll use Aspirite. That's my thick, you know, or my fan brush. And then for uh, I'll use Procreate for that's like my double zero, you know, oil painting brush or whatnot. So the power of exporting. Big shout out and thanks to Ed Marola again, uh, sending me 199 uh, copies of this uh, work here. Happy 200 and there's the pirate ship and everything. Beautifully done, making it look easy, even a little monster for good measure and just having a lot of fun here. I even like this picture in a picture. Very cool, very cool. Happy 200 and everything. Tribute to Pokebelly, the pirate ship of imagination captain. <laughs> So that is awesome. I'm going to put this up for a Tezos each. I thought I'd put it up for like 0 0.01 or 0 0.1. Then I thought, oh no, the flippers are going to come in. 
So I'm going to put it for a Tezos and it'll be a nice little haul for me, a nice little royalty for Ed, and that can just sell at its own speed and all is well. So thank you, Ed. Beautiful. And big thank you and shout out to Isla, Synth, Palm Trees and Beach, AI Party, tribute to Adrian Pokebelly, Artist Journal, 200th episode. You guys make me feel loved. So that is amazing, awesome, and all my favorite things here. Beach, synths, palm trees, and also we need is a little UFO here, but it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, and it's cool. It's very cool. And look, look at that synth with these beautiful bubbles and everything. So just a beautiful work here. Great light. One of one. Thank you, Ile. And continuing on, so Sotheby's is doing this gen art program. They're working with art blocks. We launched a dedicated program to generative art powered by AI. Highly curated long form series. So Sotheby's is doing kind of what they've been doing before. I mean, but they're doing, a, they, they continue to make inroads though, I think is the moral of the story. They're using Dutch auctions, which I think are auctions where you don't know when they're going to end. I think it was a classic Dutch auction, as far as I understand, is you have a candle that's lit. And then when the candle goes out, when the light fire goes out, that's when the auction ends. So they're using Dutch auctions, using this generative art, and they're celebrating uh, Vera Molnar. This is Michael Buhana. By far the project I'm most proud of is helping Vera Molnar, who's 99 years old and still creating every day, to use the latest tools to continue pushing boundaries and pursue her investigation into letters, disorder, and the machine imaginaire. So beautiful concept here. Machine imaginaire. I mean, the first translation would be like imaginary machine. But then I saw a translation in one of these articles on her of machine of the imagination. I So after seeing that, and if that's the interpret, I, I almost want to think the imagining machine, the machine that imagines, as I think what she's getting at. So beautiful and i love this actually these you know investigation we talk about qualitative science here this investigation into letters disorder and the machine imaginaire beautiful very beautiful uh we've been following the art market now we had a record so we saw it kind of falter uh in the last in late May, so about a month ago, we started to see, and it still is, actually, there's other articles that we don't even have time for me to look at here, but it is still faltering. However, it's it's just a choosier market. There is still a budget for, you know, what are considered like the masterpieces. Klimt's final masterpiece sells for $108 million, achieving European auction records. So that is to show that the market is still doing well for uh, you know, masterpieces, which kind of never go out of, that market never goes out of style. The reason I want to bring it up though, maybe as much as the sale and the market side of things is the work itself, you know, cause we all know Klimt's work, Gustav Klimt who did the kiss and everything. And it says here, if we, yeah, here it is. Uh, according to the auction house, Lady with a Fan was still on an easel in Klimt's studio when the artist died from a stroke in early 1918. So it's tempting to think this was an unfinished work. And again, I've, it's something I've been hammering away at, and it's nothing new, like it's and other people before me, although it's not the most common conversation, which is why I bring it up. I mean, I discovered this concept of the non finito, of the unfinished work, uh, in a lecture uh, on Michelangelo, who this you know guy who wrote a prominent Michelangelo biography, uh, we'll have to see if we can dig that up, was arguing that Michelangelo was the first to do the non finito, leaving, I think, the dying slave or one of these works purposefully unfinished was the thesis, provocative thesis indeed. Uh, and so here, again, to me, this is just another example since this was still on the easel of works being unfinished, sometimes looking better than finishing them. So just another kind of, another example, you know, and who knows, maybe Klimt thought this was finished, but it doesn't look finished to me. And so isn't that interesting? Because how often as an artist have you been kind of three quarters of the way through and just going, that's beautiful, but you already have your ratiocination going, well, I have to finish this. This was the plan. Right. So it's just a really interesting kind of thread in the history of art, this idea of, you know, finished and non-finished works. Retromani, 
uh, I want to call the art coach as well, four words that changed my life. Six years ago, I was feeling like my path as an artist had hit a dead end, which who hasn't felt that? Everything was against me and nothing I did was going to make a difference. And worst of all, no one understood what I was going through, or so I thought. Yes, par for the course, isn't it? Then a good friend who had gotten fed up with all my complaining said to me firmly, be in the room. Very interesting uh, statement. I mean, it requires some interpretation. What I think that means is get out of your head Get out of the abstractions of what's supposed to be and you failing at your dreams and just be in the room and what are you doing now? Be here. What are you, what's going on now? Kind of grounding oneself. Uh, so let's see what uh, Manny says here. It didn't solve any of the problems I was complaining about, but it put them all into perspective. Those four words brought clarity, reminding me that the key to changing my path as an artist was to fully embrace the journey itself. GM. So beautiful thoughts there. Be in the room. If you're feeling down, be in the room. I love it. So Unknown Collector posting this uh, tweet here from Flannel Capital. And basically what Flannel Capitalism was saying. So Unknown Collector is giving kind of a heads up, you know, collectors, AI art collectors, read this and be careful. Uh, so Flannel Capital just posted this. I created the attached image on mid-journey in less than two minutes using the single prompt, quote, abstract expressionism painting in the style of Joan Mitchell, end quote, and then got this very nicely textured work here. So these guys are basically saying, uh, heads up and just be careful with the AI art. I strongly recommend you spend a few hours experimenting on mid-journey if you're going to collect it. Familiarize yourself with what it can do. It will change how you look at the art market. I'm not anti-AI collecting, far from it. Once you know what low effort AI output looks like, you will quickly be able to recognize them. Just as importantly, you will be able to appreciate the artists using AI in unique, innovative ways that you couldn't replicate in two minutes. Exactly. I have noticed several artists selling on exchange art with art that looks identical to the image that I have included in this tweet. Some of this art has been collected by fellow collectors that I respect. Collect whatever art speaks to you. I'm not here to tell you what to collect. Just do it with the full understanding of what you're spending your money on and supporting. So it's kind of a tribute to AI that it's so powerful that people can put one line of code in and they're already getting these like incredibly beautiful textures here, like up there, right? Maybe the composition could use some work. I'm, I haven't looked at too much of Joan Mitchell's work. I'm familiar with the name. This was kind of controversial and we're getting to the art in a second here, but I did want to touch on this topic here, which is people buying all the art and then selling it at a higher price. Remember that just happened to Francoise Gamma and I, I really like that piece. I put, you know, the person bought it for two Tezos, bought all 10 editions, so spent 20 Tezos and there I am. I just kind of had to have the work. I didn't even want to encourage it, but I spent the 10 Tezos. Someone puts in a five Tezos offer, not taken. So this person is pointing this out. Uh, I am following an artist on object and every new work is minted and listed. A user is buying all editions instantly and lists them way more expensive. So far, so good. I am fine with this. So going fine, free market. Okay. But today I saw this and I don't like it at all. Buying all editions to burn all except. So to burn all except one and list it way above the price is a newly created one of one. And I agree and, you know, the thoughts crossed my head. I mean, sometimes you come across an obscure artist that hasn't sold anything. They have an edition of three and they're two Tezos each. And you go, wow, I could just spend six Tezos and have a one of one there in theory. But I think in practice, as I continued that conversation in my head, like if you even want to think about doing something like that, you should definitely ask the artist. You should talk to the, get the artist's permission because sometimes even the edition number is part of the work itself. Uh, maybe they want it to have wide distribution and all those things. So uh, I agree. Yeah, like, you know, it should, you should just talk to the artist and the artist should have the final say. It's sort of like if I buy a one of one, for example, and I burn it, uh, that's not cool. Right. So don't burn people's work. And yeah, and what I would say is the physical art world is maybe the best uh, an analog here or comparison. 
if you if I do an addition of 25 of my 8-bit nature series, which I am, uh, and you decide you want to, okay, reduce it to an addition of five because only four have been given out and then you're going to burn the rest of them, are you going to do that? No. So, you know, digital should follow a similar protocol, one would think. There's a big discussion on it, though. Uh, those are my thoughts on it. And I thought an interesting uh, comment. Uh, so an observation, because I just saw that, too, with Francoise Gamma. Grimoire. I ever selling artworks that I collect before Undermit? Do I not respect the artist? So this is coming down to the whole. So we're back to the sales mechanics here. Uh, so if I sell below what I paid for it, uh, do I not respect the artist? If I don't respect them and like the artwork, I won't collect their artwork at first. I'm selling under mint because I need that Tezos or that money. There was a time when I couldn't mint anything and listing my artworks because I don't have any Tezos. And there was a time when the only money I have is the offers on the artwork I collect. I send apologies by DM. Of course, you can ask Pokebelly. So yeah, I have a, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, selling like with just selling under mint i mean if you need the money that i don't have a problem with i think people should be able to do what they want maybe as an artist it's frustrating if all of a sudden you kind of sell out an edition and then someone puts it under mint maybe that kind of hurts your market but your art should be strong enough that it can weather any of that sort of thing and where because i think of art artists that i really like let's say mech.txt if things get too low they get snapped up Right. So at the end of the day, artists have to take responsibility for their own market and people are going to, you know, buying a art, buying a piece of art is not a, you know, end of the end of the time deal where, you know, you've agreed to never sell it for below a certain price. It's a market. So I, I actually I sympathize with Climois. Like you, maybe you need the money. Maybe you sell it at a discount. Someone else gets a deal. Right. Uh, they bought it in the first place. Uh, finally, I mean, a ton of news items today. CFW, I think Foundation is one of the best marketplaces today for artists of Web3. Sure, I had my fair share of hiccups with Foundation initially, questioning how they did things. Trust me, I've been around the block experimenting with platforms like Suspended Souls, which I've never even heard of, Nifty Gateway, Maker's Place, Known Origin, and OpenSea for over two years. It's, it's safe to say Foundation is truly a one of a kind. Foundation has been building and pushing forward relentlessly, especially in the bear. I, the worlds came out and DJ Kiro actually just messaged me and said he attended a meeting uh, where they were actually explaining new features that they were offering curators. And this is basically exactly what I was saying. I was like, it's impressive how much they just keep building. They have a great team at Foundation. Their commitment to empowering artists and curators especially curators, like who else has actually gone out there and created good curator tools? Like I, Foundation, I, like I'm sure they're out there, but Foundation really is a leader in that regard. I'm hopeful, more power to you, Foundation. So I totally echo this, like Foundation is doing wonderful things. And for those artists that are kind of watching this show maybe and who aren't in blockchain for those small percent and who are wondering how to get in and how to get started uh, on Ethereum Foundation is an awesome choice. It's like object and just like object or Taya on Tezos, just I'd say object to keep it simple if you're starting out. Uh, and why? Because they're both uh, no gate, no gates, no gatekeepers, and they are uh, op they're open platforms and they're both credible. So Foundation, it's a credible place with no gatekeepers. There's a very special kind of brand that's able to do that. Not just anybody can do that because OpenSea is o is no gatekeepers, but it doesn't have the same feeling as minting on Foundation, where people have been seriously collecting, just like as on Object for years. So interesting comment, and I agree. Check this out, uh, Cream Safa. So the art is out there. I'm having the honor of creating pixels for Ego Plum, the, co the composer behind iconic cartoons such as SpongeBob SquarePants and the Cuphead Show for his live music project, the Ego Plum Laboratory of Electro Musical Instruments, image from their show last weekend at Wisdom LA. So how cool would that be uh, as an, from an artist's point of view, but really I was thinking from the crowd's point of view, just to see all these different Kareem Safa works. 
these pixel art machines at work. Very, very cool and just interesting to see how the art does interface with that larger world out there in pretty profound ways. Sometimes it feels like an insular bubble out here, but it really is uh, interfacing. Check this out, Andre Summer Blues inking session. Thank you so much for watching the show. So it makes me wonder, because maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but I assume Andre is on Behance, because I know on Behance, if you sign up, Adobe's you know design program, you can live stream on Behance. So that is pretty cool and something I've looked at there. Uh, so maybe that's where Andre was streaming. Very cool. And again, just fun to see the preparatory drawings. Here are more of them. Boo boy. Talk about art number two. Please prepare yourself for burning. So more sketches and I love it. Here's another one this time by Flotista Narum, who is work we've seen on Super Rare. First open edition on foundation coming soon or object. That could be amazing. So just great to see the sketches. Uh, taking a interest in sketches here recently. Saiko. Saiko, good night. I'm working on a super rare piece now. So Saiko here is working, is using the generative zoom tool. So I had this work here and uh, my recent work looks different, but the process is basically the same. These, joy these days I enjoy combining mid-journey and generative fill with Photoshop beta. So just using these AI tools here. So as we continue to go at lightning speed here, and I mean, and look at all the different variations you can get. So you see how, again, with AI, the artist is becoming increasingly an editor which is quite interesting in itself as the role of the artist continues to evolve. So beautiful, interesting video from Saiko. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Object. Their front page is feeling more and more like a, like a news website in a good way. It's there. They have their own newspaper of the imagination that is happening here. And I just wanted to give a shout out that they're doing a wonderful job uh, and like they've picked it up in the last few you know months. Uh, today our front page features all pieces of the analog video union first group show. All of these works are made with analog video glitch, sometimes mixed with other digital procedures. So they're on top of things here. So Cabling and the team, uh, Kika, Nico, Leila, uh, they're doing a really nice job there at Object. Uh, just listed and actually let me just so I mean there's so much news in this isn't it unbelievable I mean the news beat on this scene I'm like we're barely getting to the work but we have a work here Sabato just listed my first drop on our Zora's new layer 2 network on ethereum automatic abstract 24a gestural abstraction using the demo mode in glitched out Mario Paint SNES ROMs how cool is that so if I understand Sabato correctly, is gestural, so making, uh, using Mario Paint, but glitching it out. So how interesting is that? Three day open edition, 0.01 ETH with gas under a dollar. So a layer two out of nowhere. So maybe painting here with Mario Paint, but then glitching it out. So just more brilliance here from the community. Uh, really, really, really cool work here. Beautiful too, I might add, as usual with Sabato. Really strong aesthetic uh, work there. Verse alerts, I thought this just looked cool. Auctions now live, 64 perks, uh, pixels and recursive tile. So look at this work here. So just cool, uh, you know, is this animated abstract art? You know, kind of reminiscent a little bit of uh, Figments, Kappen's side project, which we're gonna see another work of. And the secondary on that's doing incredible. Uh, so just more interesting works, verse works. And we looked at their site just the other day. So again, almost like, you know, you do get the sense, it's quite interesting what you're starting to see develop here, which is you're seeing Pace Verso. So Pace, you know, one of the main blue chip galleries in the world. Uh, you're seeing, uh, 
uh, you, there's others that are escaping me off the top of my head, but you're seeing, like for me, this feels like more of a, we saw it with Sotheby's, which is also trying to you know do this. So it's almost like you're seeing the NFT, uh, the NFT uh, technology is being adopted by these, what I'd consider like more contemporary art world style of of organizations like verse may be out of you know crypto but they look like a contemporary art traditional contemporary art organization you're starting to see more of these bridges being built between the contemporary art world and the uh blockchain nft art scene so and you see the slight overlap with some artists here and there what's going to be super interesting i think in the big picture in like 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, is I have a feeling all these punks out here on object in these open gated platforms, not invited by anybody, you know, I think it's going to go really well for that whole punk scene. And that's not to take away from any of the contemporary art things that are going on at Pace, Sotheby's, here at Verse. But... Uh, these open gated platforms, sorry, these open platforms where anybody from anywhere in the world can just go on a free market. Uh, I think that model uh, has legs. So it's going to be interesting to see how it stacks up. So this is also on Zora. Kind of jumping around a little bit here. So Sabato just minted on Zora. Now Ed is not far behind with the Villager, a beautiful work. And you can tell it's a new platform here, Zora.co and mint for 0.015 ETH. So I guess the gas fees are next to nothing. It's always good. Like we'd all be smart to use these uh, platforms because often the more you use it, if you're minting NFTs, if there's a token drop, I don't know if there is a token yet, but if there isn't, then you want to use these platforms because uh, the more you use it, the more likely you are to get tokens. So they didn't even have the magnify in there. So I brought it in and look at this. So up close and personal with Ed Marola and Digital Nomad work, uh, what is it called? The Villager. But I think I saw in a tweet, he's re referring to you know the Digital Nomad here on his laptop here. And just a really beautiful work here by Ed Marola. You see all just the richness of this, the hand-drawn you know pixel art. It's beautiful. And then this is almost like a mask similar to uh, Goyong Arts, you know, where it's almost just like a big, you know, chunk taken here that moves. And then all these guys here, beautiful frame, everything. So <laughs> that was hilarious there too. Almost like a cartoon whose name I can't remember. The Far Side. It's almost like a Far Side cartoon. It almost looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa and everything. So almost like a medieval work but with a digital nomad in it. Very, very cool. And here's another super interesting work. Ed Marola, one of one. Let's just see if it's sold first. Uh, transferred to NFT Spritz. And, you know, again, Ed working with doing a very big kind of abstract work and then puts a little form in it. Just making it all look so easy, doesn't he? And the contrast is wonderful too. Again, that trademark purple. And then you get this kind of bright peach. And here it looks like kind of a haunting figure. There's always so much going on. And again, this nice kind of darker clouds over here. Really beautiful work from Ed Marola on Object Memoria number five. Check this out. So now, uh, so Figments, which is Capin. Uh, first of all, we'll come back to that work here, but I just wanted to, I was on them checking out the market. This stuff is selling like hotcakes here. As you can see, it's all sold out. The cheapest one is 40 Tezos. This edition of 10, which is starting to look cheap. I mean, 40. Uh, so that is pretty awesome. These abstracts are really going somewhere. And looks like this is maybe a preview of one that's coming up. Here's my new address. And it looks like the Milky Way and with some alien writing in it. So very, really interesting, cool work, backyard. So Capin, Figments, brilliant. Great to see Stippin' Pixel, Whimsical Breezy. Uh, so another work here, again, selling this experimental pixel art uh, is really, 
it has legs, shall we say. Uh, so these are selling out. I mean, he's selling at a very reasonable price of five Tezos each, and they're not even selling out right away. Look, it was minted in 19th of May. So maybe this is old. I thought this was new. I guess someone listed it. I thought there was a new one. Let me just check. Maybe it was this one. This is what I'm looking at. So I thought there were two new ones. So here's another new one. This is an edition of five. Again, selling out. Also still keeping this price at five Tezos. There is Mikey Wilson once again. And just another cool kind of housework with pixelation and experimentation. So all these experimental pixel artists would make just like a, a heck of a show, wouldn't it? A heck of a show. So Nightjot, just super interesting work. Look at this work by Rakano that really caught my eye. This super interesting uh, narrative is what I'd call it. Almost reminiscent of that Sabato work with like the ceiling fan and almost reminiscent to Sabato in these kind of narratives that are created, but totally different and using, as Rakano likes to do, these kind of cool things. Like this is like, I'd call a Rakano trope at this point. The picture of the computer with the video game on it and then taking a step back and seeing that in a larger context, I had to buy it. It was on secondary for fourteen fifty because I kind of feel it's this kind of weird narrative that arguably Sabato started with, but Rocano is doing his own spin on it. Uh, I'm finding this super just kind of interesting from just like a narrative point of view. Also, you know, you see the Pulp Fiction there, also from an artistic vantage point. And I quite like the title as well, Luxury Elite. So, you know, don't forget Ricano just a f two or three short months ago had that sad internet painting like, you know, nobody's paying attention to my art and here's Ricano selling out all of the t all the time. Things change really fast in this business. The lesson in persistence. So just keeping it interesting there too. Silva Santos, Enchanted Glitchscape. So Silva Santos, of course, did that waterfall, which did really well. Uh, we showed it here. And here's just another interesting glitch. If you can do innovative Nintendo uh, ROM glitches, they will sell. And so this is selling. Edition of 33. Look at that. So let me just see. Yeah, selling a ton of them. I mean, that's impressive. Lorna Mills. Lorna Mills has three. I guess Lorna Mills loved that work here. Sabato, you know, so really nice work here from, from uh, Silva Santus, I believe the name is. It is. Continuing on, Haiti Rocket with, you know, beautiful glitch, Nintendo glitch ROM work. This is of a plane, maybe leaving a, almost like a flight simulator. Really cool subject matter. Beautiful. Look at how long this is too, because I think it launches off of the aircraft carrier at some point. I think, I thought. So quite a long, yeah, quite a long loop here, isn't it? And look at how beautifully it launches off. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Edition of six and selling for uh, 13 Tezos each, still pretty reasonable uh, on primary. And here's another work by uh, Haiti called Only. And I just thought this was kind of funny, kind of classic, kind of punk rock, you know. And I like the colors too. It looks like the blue from the Windows, Microsoft Windows uh, operating system has been changed. I also like the speed. The message is pretty funny too. Uh, kind of classic, only six Tezos, still available. Here's a edition of three, a Vscape. Third generated Wasteland 6. So continuing with this, what looks like retro software here from Haiti Rocket, just a really, really cool series here. Kind of a Tron landscape sort of thing. You gotta love the experimentation here. Again, you could make a show of experimental pixel art, couldn't you? Consolidation, interpretation, Mick Renders, who has been experimenting with pixel art for weeks. I've been tracking it and this one looked pretty cool as well. So just a neat combination of dithering and combining it with a background with some interesting distortion. So it's going somewhere here, Mick. So very cool and looking like a, almost like a sculpture of sorts being kind of sliced away here. So very cool and I think sold out. Nope, it is all available at five Tezos, 55 cents. 
So cool to see McRenders continue with the pixel art. Delving through the darkness, Green Ginger, edition of 30. I thought this was just kind of, again, we're looking at more exper experimental pixel art. Look at this interesting flash that's going on here. And I just thought it was kind of novel, this whole thing. And again, we have this narrative, a different type of narrative. This is more of a comic book narrative. But it seems like, you know, by all these panels in a, being in a comic book kind of format, it looks like the same person and that they're climbing down and then going down almost like a video game, almost like Hard Hat Mac or something from back in the day. Some beautiful dithering there too. Only a Tezo 70 and there's three left. There are three left. So selling well. Then there's this account whose name I know not, but who also works with video game uh, tiling, so to speak, or maybe hex, uh, hex, I don't know how you'd call it, but it looks like using video game tools here, right? And of a certain era, and you can see it in the dithering, Symbolic Vision 04, the three magic drops, so maybe a lot of symbolism in here too. See an Aladdin's lamp up there, and just kind of interesting, very interesting work here. Again, this show today feels like one big experimental pixel art show. Continuing on, Spiegel's Meskinen, headquarters number one, playing again with retro technology. We have an old photocopier here and kind of having a life of its own and sending off a uh, sheet of paper and then a classic. Again, we talked about the semiotics of the shopping mall, also doing kind of an analysis of the furniture, so to speak, of the mind in, you know, your modern office, you know, this, and these are probably even still there. For those that still go to an office, you probably still have photocopiers. You still have these glass doors, these classic office plants. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Headquarters number one. Great title minted today. Slav, Slava, Slava Engel. I feel like I, because I was not pronouncing Slaving, Slava Engel, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, I need to go back to that message. It's been a while since we've looked at their work, releasing a one of one wisdom battle. So it's, you know, a rare one of one. And this went out, you know, trademark kind of one bit or two bit uh, work here and uh, went out to Bijou who, I don't know if you've looked at Bijou's collection. It's just a hardcore one of one collection. Bijou in French is jewels. So maybe that is why it's called Bijou. So on a mission to buy one of ones, you know, it's interesting. Like people sometimes uh, comment on the idea that uh, Tezos art is too cheap. But I think if you start releasing one of ones, like that is probably the way to start raising the prices because there is something about the one of one from the collector's viewpoint that is just so precious. It is a unique, it is a one of one. It, so there's something about it, you know, and we even see the desire in that person in earlier that, that we we're earlier discussing who had burnt this edition of like seven and reduced it to one. Right. That's how badly people like that's how special one of ones are. So if you don't make many one of ones, it's something worth doing. So continuing on, uh, Yudho, uh, contact. We search for meaning in the contact we make and find solace in the chaos we embrace. So this is on Ninfa IO. So of course we remember that platform, a one of one, a very kind of Magritte feeling work here with this. Uh, there are a few uh, Magritte works that kind of divide up into four, a window with different objects, kind of really has a Magritte feel to it. And just kind of beautiful work. And I thought an interesting composition. And yeah, let me see if I can bring up that Magritte window uh, objects. I, I, it has a great title too. Here, Here's one. So, the door, the wind, yeah, so this is brilliant. Uh, there is another one with a guy that's hunting, and here's another one. You see, yeah, and so Magritte, I mean, this is just classic surrealism here. You know, uh, juxtaposition, plain, you know, so how we read is also what this is about. That's part of what the Peloponnesian War, this series I'm working on is about, is how we read information. The image, we see handbag, but then we have you know, juxtaposed text. 
And then we have all of these in juxtaposition, you know, l'oiseau, the bird, but it's actually a jackknife. And probably what happened is he probably looked at it and the first word that he thought he probably went with, I'm guessing. So anyway, cool work. Look at this stunner by uh, Rat Cloak. And this is called Crucis, almost like crisis, but a cruise. We're cruising and kind of a dark work here. It looks like some migrants on a boat and almost like an angelic figure here in almost like a St. Christopher type uh, colors here and that red cloak and, you know, maybe guiding them to a certain degree with this stick here in the, through the water and a gun. And then almost like these figures here with, you know, that classic like dark kind of eyes lit up and a dark, dark work here. Of course, Rat Cloak is in Ukraine. And so war and migration go hand in hand and a beautifully painted work here. A beautiful composition. And you can see really darkly here the kind of the background of this landscape here. Beautiful details as ever, just a stunning, incredible artist here. And so this was listed for point three, unlisted and transferred to an anonymous wallet. So very cool. So that looks like it sold. Charity live streamer attacked while doing good deed. <laughs> so gloom too. Charity, look at how many works have come out in just the last two days. Charity live streamer attacked while doing good deeds. We're gonna cruise through the rest of this episode. Uh, so a live streamer who is attacked doing good deeds. And it looks like this is the attacker and this is the live stream and this is the guy attacking him. So interesting and some YouTube user interface here. And another work, kind of an interesting subtle work by GloomTube, Sky Lantern Starts a Fire, edition of 20. And so it just seems like a quiet night with some nice sky lanterns. And then one of them falls to the ground and starts a fire. And you can start to see the smoke going up. So kind of a classic uh, gloom tube work here. And I assume, are they not all sold yet? I'm not gonna reload this uh, page because uh, otherwise my mic might cut off as it did yesterday. RJ, another beautiful work here, sold for 0.15 ETH. Again, looks like uh, what I'm calling spectral pastiche, taking other artists and then AI remixing, perhaps, not necessarily on this one. Really interesting composition though. Like from just a purely poetic, you know, ambitious poetic perspective, like it's an ambitious uh, composition here, isn't it? Like there's a lot kind of symbolically going on. And what is going on with this figure here who's grabbing their leg with this kind of flower pot of sorts, you know, uh, with these flowers in it and almost an American flag. So just full of any shadows and this person looking away really has kind of a 1970s, 1980s kind of narrative, postmodern narrative painting kind of feel to it. Very interesting. Or, you know, I'm back to Hockney. Junkadelic and working class. And we'll see if this works here. A nice, like, Microsoft paint work. Got the samurai sword. So some cool music here. So, cool single. Like, what's so interesting about this, there's Chunkadelic on the license plate. You're getting all the things that you love about vinyl here, which is the big image and this awesome kind of helicopter here. And you get the music, but it's not a single. Like, to me, this is like a digital single, a reinvention of the single for the 21st century. So, very cool. Stop playing feet featuring Saphir, edition of 25 for 10 Tezos, 13 left, very cool. Board Me Social Club, and big thank you to Tornado for sending me one of these. She is a huge fan of Board Me Social Club. And here is the work, it's an edition of 40. It was an open edition, which is finished. Really nice work here, kind of a surreal, surrealist work here as well with the bananas and everything, the clouds, the brick wall, and kind of the homemade perspective here. And the interesting figure with the green skin, the rose-colored glasses, uh, you could go on and on. Just an interesting work and looks like a big bullet wound there. Available for $12.70. Let's just see what it sold for on primary as an open edition. There's a lot of opportunity with these open editions. 
This might be slow to load up. Oh, there it is. Only a Tezos 50. So that is very cool. So nice piece here uh, from Board Me Social Club. Mental noise. I mean, not a bad haul either. I mean, 60 Tezos, not bad at all. Uh, wandering above the sea of Tezos. So beautiful work. I saw Mikey de la Creme retweet this. Edition of 52 for two Tezos. Kind of, again, retro technology. And there's Tezos in the middle. Really nice piece here by Mental Noise. Game Boy, Nintendo, the Virgin Mary statue. Hilarious. And the trademark rabbit there. I think that's a rabbit or almost like one of those uh, Kit Kat clocks. But not sure. Wandering above the sea of Tezos. So beautiful work here. Still available for two Tezos. This is Cider is back. So just another interesting distortion, use of distortion, you know, which I'm just finding very interesting how these artists are using distortion. Again, like Osprin, like Grafica.png, getting some really interesting, interesting, rich looking textures. Kurt Hustle Collective here, uh, Kurt Hustle Collective World, kind of a homage to their website in a sense, contact links, apps. Within a Windows 95 frame here, there is the website, which actually exists, by the way. So just funny and interesting as ever. Edition of one and original soundtrack, as you know, as we expect here. Quilanina with an edition of one. I'm almost wondering if there's a one of one festival of some kind going on. Sisa Pacha, acrylic and oil painting. So this, interestingly, is a physical. It looks like a Procreate work and some nice pixelation in the sun there. Beautiful. Very beautiful work here from Quila Nina, a one of one. It has not been listed yet. And getting into the illustration, and I'm going to speed up the, the, the show a bit here. Daniel W. with a cool monster, Laraje. And this is an edition of 35, selling for three Tezos each. And there it is, just another kind of novel. Again, what I'm loving about this series is I'm seeing kind of mythological... Uh, tropes or iconography, but in ways that I've never, in, with monsters I've never seen before. So I'm not sure if there's combination going on here of different kinds of elements, uh, but super interesting. This is called Laraje. Uh, continuing on in Hagluk with this, we missed this one of one. And you might remember in Hagluk's uh, architectural uh, works that are like these kind of flashing gifts. There's a one of one that got put out of this rainstorm here and looking like just a, again, it looks like what I'd call homemade architecture, uh, which is very charming in its own way. And it looks like just like an apartment block of sorts, the rain open edition, one of one. Oh, so that's what happened. A interesting, maybe in Hagluk was the only minter. So now it's 55. Very interesting. Smonter with a poetic work here. Full-time job. For some of us, life is really disgusting. At least you have a job, right? So an ironic question at the end there. And yeah, just, you know, people, not everybody has a great job, right? So, you know, another poetic work here. Remember the coffee work from above that we saw from Smonter? Uh, I quite like this piece. I'm not sure if I've picked it up yet, but I want to. Edition of 10, there are eight left, so full-time job. Everyday Adventures, that's what I love about that series. It's the art of the everyday, as this one is here by Greco Rare. Campion's Bre Breakfast, so Champion's Breakfast. A bottle of Coke and some Marlboros. Nice drawing, very charming. Sold for 25 Tezos to Mikey Wilson. A one of one, another one of one. It's kind of exciting. And here's a new one, I think, by Quampa. Simple Thoughts using Microsoft Paint. Super interesting artist. I love how they include uh, the user interface in these shots here too. Very nice. And here it is on its own. It changes the work quite a bit. I love the those process shots though. Very cool. Interesting artist. And here is Demon Ego with a one of one. Let's just check the market here. Accepted offer for 76 and just a very cool, again, and actually, we need to go back to Demon Ego's comment there because actually was commenting, Demon Ego was commenting on how these gradients are made. And I believe they're printed out and then used as collage. We'll go back to Demon Ego's comment uh, next episode. Uh, but I believe he was saying in the YouTube comment there that these are actually printed out gradients. So a really interesting process here, going from digital to physical and back. Everything we invited to co compromise is a wasted Everything we invited to compromise is a wasted effort. Very cool. 76 Tezos, not bad at all. 
Sometimes when I think so soon with an experimental AI work, kind of reminds me of Leonora Carrington, the surrealist there, and just a really nice piece here. Uh, available one of one for 30 Tezos. As we wrap up here, Mikey Wilson edition of 15 after the Gold Rush Blues. So these are just getting more and more impressive here, aren't they? And again, you see, you know, Mikey Wilson, a collector, started making some art, just keeps at it and keeps at it and just gets better and better. And now you see quite a nice work here. Another very, very nice work with this gorgeous kind of muted color this gorgeous paint strokes, and then you see this nice, bright yellow guitar contrasting it, bringing it all back home. Beautiful work. You almost see like Cezanne-like fruits here. Beautiful, very beautiful work from Mikey Wilson by his work. Uh, th edition 13 left at 10 Tezos each. Beautiful work there. Marina Amadova, Meadow Perfume, and just another poetic AI artwork here. Like just a, this feels like a very poetic 19th century style painting, but it's AI and it's its own feeling. It's instantly recognizable as Marina Amadova's as well. Edition of 20 for six Tezos, 15 left. And we already looked at that. And finally, threesomes with a cool physical, the real future stars. Look at this. Like there's a great painted trading card putting cats on it. Like, how can that not be popular? Season 10, Dream, Scarlet, Crouton, and Edition of 90. These are probably all, you know, offer of 50 Tezos not being accepted. Yeah, so Threesomes has his own thing going in the grotto there. Just like an incredible legion of collectors. And of course, you know, the artist Die With The Most Likes with a hilarious uh, work, Leave Meeting. So a Zoom interface here and someone looking like they just did Hari Kari with other people looking on a horror show, brilliantly and beautifully painted, a great concept with all the little cursors there, brilliant. From Die with the most likes and I was just rushing. Let's, we're gonna load it up manually, my friends, the work here. That is your show, everybody. Until next time. This was the work. Until next time, take care.